After looking at the test results, I thought we might do a little review of examples students particularly got wrong. I do want you to write this up in your homework log and will be part of our class exercise today. So first thing we'll do is copy this example into your booklet and we'll pause to do that. So as we look at this, we're wondering what do we multiply each term by to get rid of the fractions? And we're going to use, of course, the least common denominator. And there are three terms. So here we have a 5, a 2, and a 3. So one way to figure out a, a denominator is just multiply everything. 2 times 3 is 6 times 5 is 30. And that happens to be our least common denominator here. So we're going to multiply each term by 30. Five will go into there once. Five will go into there six times. Two will go into there once. Two will go into there 15 times. Three will go into there once. Three will go into there 10 times. So now all our denominators are one. We just write our new fraction. So it's a negative six times seven is a negative. 42, a negative 15y here, and here we have a negative 10 times 7, a negative 70. Now we want our value of y, the variable, to be positive. Or we could leave it here, but if we want it positive, we would just move it over to this side as a 15y. And we're going to then move our negative 42 over to this side as a positive 42. And this will give us a negative 28. So again, from this side, we brought it over, changed its sign, add these together, we get this. Now to solve, we divide both sides by 15. And here, the 15s cancel out, and we end up with a positive y equals this, and that is our answer. All right, let's go on to the next one. We can use that same protocol for this one now. What we need to do is distribute, and we'll write it up here. So two times, uh, three times two x is six x. Three times eight is twenty-four, and that equals sixty. Now, we want to isolate the 6x. So, again, we could transpose it, or the other technique is to subtract 24 here, subtract 24 there, and this becomes 0. We have 6x equals 6, and this will be 3. Now, we divide both sides by 6, and we get x equals 6. So this one was fairly simple, and this is the work on the blue sheet that would help give partial credit in some cases. All right, let's go on. So write this in your log here. And again, we de we're dealing with lots of fractions. 
So we want to get rid of the fractions by multiplying each of these terms by the lowest common denominator, which again happens to be 30. So these were examples that the student had incorrect, and that's why I chose them. So now it's much easier since our denominators are all a 1. So this is going to be 10 equals a negative 15x. And this will be a negative 6 times 2 is a negative 12. So again, I'm going to bring the 15 over to make it positive to this side. So 15x bring the 10 over to this side as a negative 10, so this just becomes negative 22. Divide both sides by 15. And x is a negative 22 fifteenths. So again, once you develop this technique, the equations aren't that difficult to solve. Now, in this uh, next example, take a moment to write this down. And again, we're looking for the least common denominator to get rid of our fractions. We have a 5. Remember here there's a 1 already. This is a 2 and this is a 2. So what would our least common denominator be? If you said 10, that is correct. Now what I noticed in checking some of the blue sheets, students would multiply the fractions by the least common denominator, but they wouldn't do the 2. Remember, what we're doing to this equation is multiplying everything by 10 so that in making it bigger, we could do this canceling here to make all of our denominators a 1. So 5 will go into there once, 5 goes into there twice. Nothing cancels out here, so you will have to eventually multiply the negative 2 by the 10. We'll do that shortly. 2 goes into there once. 2 goes into there five times. 2 goes into there once. 2 goes into there five times. So now we have ones for denominators. We need to just continue simplifying the top. 2 times 2u is 4u. A negative 10 times 2 is a negative 20. A negative 5 times 3 is a negative 15u. And a negative 1 times 5 is a negative 5. And as you do this, you should, you know, go back and check your work, watch the signs, take your time. And now you want to make everything positive if you can. So here we're going to bring this negative 15u over to this side, add it to the 4u now. This will become a 19u. Now remember, you can just do it this way, 15u. 15u, and there's where our 19u comes from. And then we're going to bring this over, or add 20, add 20, and this will become a positive 15. And then to solve for a positive u, we divide 
by the numerical coefficient, the 19, and then u equals 15 nineteenths. And we're almost finished. Now, this one is in set builder notation, and we're asked to graph it on this number line. Well, we know that these inequality symbols are indicated by a hollow on negative 6 here. and a negative 3 because it's just less than as opposed to if there were a line underneath this and it was less than or equal to, these would be a solid dot. And there is a tool where you can get uh, hollows at the end and then a line between that and of course through your work with uh, the software you hopefully you practice how to do that so this is the graph and there it is down here now sometimes they might ask for you to put it in interval notation so how would you put this in interval notation well, you can take it right from the graph. We said a hollow was a parenthesis, and that is starting at negative 6, going to negative 3, and this is a parenthesis there as well. So this would be interval notation. There's the graph, and this is set builder notation. And there is your interval notation there. And again, if you have any questions, hopefully you're asking them. Now, for this uh, last one, we've written the inequality, and this also has fractions. So as we go to solve it, we use the same technique. What's our lowest common denominator? I have an 8 and a 4. And if you said 8, that is correct. I'm going to multiply every term by 8. 1, 2, 3 terms. So this then becomes 8y. Here the 8's cancel out, so this is now a negative 5. And here 4 will go into there once, 4 will go into there twice. So this is now a negative 2. Now we want to take this negative 5 and bring it over to the other side to isolate the 8y. So this becomes 8y. We're adding 5 to both sides, so this becomes a positive 3. And again, we're dividing by the numerical coefficient. That's with the variable 8. And then the 8's cancel out, and there is our answer. Now, if we were to graph this, although they don't seem to be asking for that, we would go on our number line, uh, 3 8 And would we put a solid dot here? Or a hollow dot? Well, because it also equals that, we darken it in. And then the line extends actually this way here. It's less than, I didn't read that too well. There we go. Now, how would I write that in interval notation? Just to wind this up here. I would put where this is coming from out here, which is negative infinity going up to 3 eighths. And what symbol do I put here now? 
And the answer is a bracket facing left. Okay, so this is around 15 minutes. We're going to have our review here a little bit of your chapter three work, and then following that we'll have our quiz.